Hello, Dave Herman, and starting at 7-11 or 7-12 in the evening in Olympia, Washington on March 20th, 2018. Uh, working on my Ghosted Warrior, getting around to that again today. I've been pretty busy doing stuff in life, so uh, yeah, getting around to that. All right, so I'm going to work on the crane in this picture. No reference, nothing. I'm just going to paint my little crane over here. So let's, uh, let me enlarge him for a little bit, just a touch. Uh, let's see here. Just kind of key in in the center. Oops. I, sorry, I'm in the select, deselect. I was on the wrong tab. There we go. <clears throat> and magnify. Centering the bird. See how that works? You know, that, uh, you put it, your magnifier wherever you want it to be in the center of. Then it plays its games. Okay. So let's get the whole bird in the picture about there. And then use Mr. Hand and bring it into the center. Okay. So now I'm going to do a little detail work. It's going to be ghosted, but basically you have the neck, and then the wings back here. The neck is under there, coming into the body. And then this legs and stuff of a magic crane. And since it's a smoky crane coming out, we got to make it look a little morphy and stuff like that. Okay. So... Let's go over to brush. Right there. Okay. And we'll, of course, make that smaller. Uh, there we go. And let's work a little bit. So let's I'm gonna think about the smoke, bringing it together here, how I want to do that. Every time I use my dropper, it changes the ink over here, just so you guys are hip to that. People that haven't done much with Photoshop. It's right on the verge where you can see each pixel, each block. So that's, that's a good size sometimes to work on your small detail, because then when you scale it down, it looks really good. <coughs> Because these are really tiny. I mean, this like this smoke line is maybe four pixels tall or something. So I don't know what that converts to in inches, but it's small. Somebody else will, will tell me. All right, so get some wispy smoke in here. And then whether I want the body uh, behind or a swirl of smoke around it or whatever, uh, I think I'm going to decide that right now. So it's coming out here, it goes here. It could go around one time and carry up. And we can see how that looks. Just take a little grayer smoke. So, so this comes around and then it could kind of come into this loop. So sometimes you might want to get black in there too and you're just varying the pressure. So uh, it's like this is coming around. And this is coming around. And this is coming around. Uh, like that. This would be coming here to loop up. Almost like a smoke ring hidden in there. But uh, it's dissipating. So don't want to be super obvious. I don't. And uh, the black, of course, can be forming. So uh, to bring that out a little, now that we've kind of dis discerned the shape, I'll have some overlapping sections. So I go light, not too much hard there, and then harder here, and then fade away, and then maybe harder here, and then bring it up across. Still seeing the bird through there, up here, and so on, like that. And this in front here, I'm gonna I'm gonna make that black. 
so like that and hide that so now it comes around comes down like that goes there so let me see a little bit of the leg so you just have to think that out you know it's not a big it's not like super magical it's just you know kind of interpret what you see you know like a garden hose was wrapped around a stick or something just gotta imagine that in your mind every artist can do that uh, instead of thinking how you know what the trick is it's it's really more of you making it the way you would imagine so it comes it's in front of this it goes behind there it comes over this again and then it travels up here and we're going to morph it into some coolness and then I might even have a little bit uh, sharper toe just for fun like like here and like that and the bird these are only like a pixel wide and you know this one here can be a little wispy but still enough to give you a sense and then that adds like a feeling of gravity you know like the legs are pointing straight down so you get the feeling of that and then these are pointing up and you get the feeling of lift and then the rest is just visual uh, whatever you want to do so let's work up some feathers here uh, so you know it's also this crane is almost like a phoenix rising out of nothing uh, to interact with the <clears throat> green sacred geometry thing that's disturbing the forest so to speak <laughs> let's pick a shade of gray and if you notice here I've got my opacity at 68 I always set the flow at like a third or so of the I mean I change them at different times but uh, that way you know like if I press all hard right there see that's as bright as it gets and if I press soft you can kind of blend you know and then it, you can also use the blend stick so right now I'm doing this kind of creating a smoky interaction with now I can come back and put details in, you know, and just, it's like you were drawing an angel wing or something. You kind of just work it and go back and forth and back and forth. And you want this to be nebulous more because it's kind of spiritual. It's coming out of nothing. It's smoky, hazy. Uh, like that. And you could even stick in. So see how this is attaching to the body. It can also be like a shadow. You can have, and you know, don't take anything I say as a gospel because I make it up as I go. But then you can have like more of a shadow, kind of through here, just sectioning. Um, uh, you know, it's a, it's visibility, giving it a contour like that. Uh, its highest point here it depresses back into that shadow and then they're uh, independent down here you, know? you can do that and then you have the body kind of there and it can be made larger if you want like so and you know you can <clears throat> so that it's closer to the viewer and you can shape it with smoke or you can shape it with sky and uh, that's kind of that. So I'm not working real fast because I'm trying to explain something here. But uh, so getting back that the body is kind of curving into here. I'll separate it from the wing a little bit. And then I'll bring this wing into the body. Like that. Maybe some smoke here. The intersections are brighter if I want. And then it's kind of cool like it drapes <clears throat> drapes down I'm going to just define a little bit more of the wing so maybe here 
and here and I like the way this feather is shaped out I like these kind of smaller feathers this can be here and uh, like so this wing can kind of uh, maybe join the body like that into here and this would be like a shoulder that way so I could do that and then I have the body separate from the wing itself and the neck even stronger there like that so uh, since I have like a magical red kind of mixed into this I can extend that here if I want to separate the wing brighten it there and, and you know you imagine things the way you imagine them I'm just kind of giving you my take on what I'm doing now as I draw just a simple detail into a, a picture uh, because I'm not on a timeline with this and it's a project I'm just uh, coming back in to intermittently uh, having fun and I've been studying the new uh, Wacom it's getting close they're going to release it the 24 inch first before the 32 the 32 they say maybe in the summer so Wacom never really uh, for whatever reason gives you a super defined date I think with all the competition in the world now uh, producing serious products is getting very very um, important so there's no point in releasing something and getting bad press when it's better to release it a little late so uh, like everyone says about Wacom that I read online instead of a release date they always have release windows and you can find uh, some new stuff. Uh, there was uh, different people that went to a small show in England where they got to, you know, test test one. It really looks great. All the artists that are working on it had good things to say. And there are people that use other Wacom products like Cintiqs or uh, um, their uh, computer board also they have like a 13 inch and a 16 inch it's both a computer and a tablet kind of like a surface thing but uh, the people that use the 24 inch tablet said it's just amazing and I'm kind of digging that because it's a big leap for me to spend the money this isn't an ad for Wacom it's just telling you that I'm going to go into it because for me uh, having been a traditional artist my whole life uh, and a tattoo artist and advertising and stuff when I used to do that. Um, I'm not used to drawing on an angle board and then looking up at the screen. Even though I taught myself to do that over these last five years, uh, it's not my optimum way to produce. It is a very low cost way to do it in today's world of expenses. But I have a feeling my personal growth will expand exponentially once I'm on a glass screen I can just look right at and draw my digital art directly on that because that will be optimum for me. Oh, you know, I've, I've learned to live with this and probably the one thing I I like is I want to have a minimum of the 24 inch screen as long as I'm babbling uh, I, they say the same thing artists when they get to work on one finally instead of a tablet or a laptop or something that has 15 inch screens or you know that man to go back to drawing on a glass it's 24 inches where you can see the entire picture like this is 9 by 12 I probably could have this enlarged like this and it would take up the majority of the screen of a 24 inch. I don't know. Let's see. This one's, this monitor is 21. So, yeah, it would look like this except I'd be drawing directly on it. Now that I think about it. Now that I really think about it. And, uh, 
one thing it has is it has the engine if you want to spend a ton of money, you know, because then you get up like the Surface Studio and stuff when you buy all the peripheral stuff. But just getting a tablet, a color, color calibration tool, and the gadget that you put on there that you can program the buttons, uh, you know, you're going to end up running into some loot, man. It's still over 3000 bucks. So, and then you add an engine to that, which is probably another three. You can get into some serious money down the tube. You'd have to be really generating some cash. So, I just look forward to getting the tablet. It's got the legs, so you don't need a very expensive stand. And since I have a uh, power desk, that I invested in this year for the 500 bucks, I can raise and lower my desk, and then I'll just put it on an angle and raise and lower the desk till I'm computer happy. And you can see I'm adding some color to make this interesting and some highlights as we work and talk. To bring excitement to my birdie. Little birdie! So it's his own little like drone weapon bird, you know. This is uh, this is the future. We have a uh, samurai spaceman, which could be the predecessor to samurais on Earth, having communicated with Earth people. They tried to look like them. That's one thing this could fit into in a sci-fi story. Um, there's many, many tales. And the Japanese, uh, what we say is mythology, all these cultures, they have this similar thing. That's what gets me. And so if there's overlap, I totally believe wherever overlap is, that's truth. And... When you study different cultures and you find the overlap, whether it's Hindu or uh, Sumerian, Japanese, Chinese. I mean, the Chinese have some uh, amazing things hidden under the dirt there. The temple and stuff on uh, Pumapunku, uh, they've only gone down two feet into the mud. If they would go further, they would find that building. But they're not doing it. Nobody wants to do it. Uh, I really think it's a combination of fear as much as it is uh, people want to find it. There are other people who feel that what's under there is going to scare us. Even though it's inactive, uh, they just don't want us to see the advanced civilizations that were on the earth before us that are buried in ice in the in the Arctic, whether the North or the South Pole, or the things at Pumapunku, or, you know, the visible things you see in India are just incredible. Those temples that are seven stories tall, carved out of a mountain, just one piece. Every room, lintel, every Buddha, every statue in it, it's all attached one stone. Today, we do not know even how to execute the blueprint for that. And they had no blueprints. That's what they're telling us. Because they're destroyed, you know, even they would be paper. But if they were if they were Anunnaki or Sumerian, it would have been written on uh, clay tablets because those survived, or the jeweled um, cylinder seals. And some of those cylinder seals are three quarters of an inch tall that's it with pictures of gods and lords and you can't see any tool marks and then they roll that into the clay so when you when you see that <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> and you see that uh, it's carved in reverse the cylinder itself is only three quarters of an inch tall and there's a scene carved into it and yet there's there's no chisel marks, like it's very smooth, like it was cast as a jewel. So, uh, I've seen those in art museums. 
Detroit Art Institute has some cylinder seals. So when I grew up in Michigan, I was able to see Sumerian artwork in the real. Of course, I've studied it in a net million times. But uh, the point is, everything we have is just a trace of their advanced cultures. You know, as a martial artist who uh, was fortunate to have a master who taught him how to study Japanese swords, um, today, even though there's a living master's that they call a national treasure in Japan, a man could be in his late 90s making swords, and they look like the ancient swords. They are not the combination of materials precisely as the old sword. They're visually as beautiful and visually as specter, but they are not the same thing. And even though they go for 100,000, they are not remotely the same thing. And I've held them, and I've bought and sold them as a trader, and collecting, you know, armature from Japan, uh, pieces off of swords, subas, which are guards, and fukis and kishiras, which are parts of the handle, and uh, manukis, which go in the handle, and all that good stuff. They don't make it the way the ancients did. And even you, even with our technology, we just can't take one apart and figure it out. You know, you, do, you can't damage the best ones, for sure. You don't want to do that. That'd be destroying a, in gorgeous treasures. Uh, and there are supposedly five Miyamoto Musashi ones in the world, which... As legend says, if you put one in the water, you can't see it. So Miyamoto Musashi has a kind of, uh, just a zillion fables and tales about him, but he was unbelievable with over 60 recorded hand-to-hand -hand combats with swords against human beings. And he survived all those. And then what makes him even more interesting is he retired to a mountain and he has left sculptures and artwork. He became an artist after having a torturous childhood from a vicious father that led him to become a vicious warrior. And he was vicious. History tells us he was vicious and fearless. Uh, and unafraid of anything. You know, he would fight three guys at a time with weapons. It's, I don't know if anybody's ever been in a fist fight. <laughs> but fighting three guys with swords, that's like over the top. You know. I don't care how you yell at them, whatever. There are guys that don't flinch. So. Alright, let's take and copy some of this background. And I'm talking the way I do like when I tattoo. A lot of times I just make conversation to keep things moving along. Um, don't hold me. Uh, my conversations up as absolute gospel and you know flawless. I'm not presenting myself as a flawless human being by any means. Actually, the opposite. You know, just a guy that does stuff. And you can see how we're tidying this up, it's delineating some feathers, putting some coolness here and there. As a magic bird. So let me save this before I screw it up. Save as. I'm up to uh, frame 22 and ping 22. So let me go to 23. Save that right here in this folder. And save it as a JPEG, as a frame. That's what I call my stills. And that will go there. And let's stand back and look at it. So that would be view, fit on screen, like that. See, now we're getting somewhere. Very cool. Well, thanks for tuning in. Hope you guys have a good evening.